everyone. Good Wednesday morning to you. Tennessee Valley this morning. Joe and Kim Palo today as we are each and every Wednesday. hump day. Hump day. Hump day Wednesday. Uh, yeah. And uh, and so anyway, we, we've got a great show for you uh, in store for you today. We're glad you've joined us this morning. Hope uh, so far your morning's gone well. I know it's kind of early, but... Um, <laughs> Can't much go wrong so far. I yeah, mean, well, I don't know. know. You know Unless it your power's upon, out. Yeah, That's something like that. a bad thing to wake up to. Or if or not you, to uh, wake up to. <laughs> if you if you're in a <laughs> rush, right if you got up late and you're in a hurry now, you're like turning the TV down. Shut up! I'm in a hurry. <laughs> That's right. You know, I um, say that to you all the time. I know you do. Even when she's no not TV. in a hurry, <laughs> and she goes like this too, like it's really going to turn me down. It doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. Um, I tried every remote in the house. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. You don't haven't programmed them to me yet, Kim. My number is five six seven two. I know. But the uh, bad thing is, though, is that you're in, you know, not only are you in my life and everywhere in person, mm -hmm. when you're on the television and it comes on, you have it on every TV in the house and turn it Oh, and then I even have brought TVs in <laughs> and put them on. Just borrowed neighbor's TV so, just to have so it on in every So I just, you know, uh, it's just a bundle of fun uh, in my yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick, before we get into our show, let me first uh, tell you about this, which we are going to until the day of. This is Boogie <laughs> at the Barn fundraising uh, it's Boogie at the Barn, an Armed Forces Day celebration, fundraising event for Southeast Tennessee Veterans Home, which by now you have heard we are still getting, still on track for uh, uh, 2014. Uh, this event's going to be held Saturday, May 19th at Pappy's Place, formerly John Simmons Farm. You know where that's at. Lots of entertainment, food, excitement, fun, novelty booths. Uh, gates open at noon. Bands like Hard Boil, Dexter Thomas. Uh, uh, Collins, Collins Brothers, Brothers uh, and headlining the, the whole show, Confederate Railroad. That's right, and they're uh, going to have food. <laughs> lots of food, great food, <laughs> in food. fact. More vendors barbecue. than they ever yeah. than they uh, ever have had. Now, you can get your tickets in advance. They're fifteen dollars at the gate, day of the show, twenty bucks. But like I've been saying from day one, <laughs> go ahead and give the twenty bucks even in advance because it's for a worthwhile cause. It's five more bucks. Joe can spend your money. I'll spend your He'll money spend for you. Spend your money. Uh, but it but is it's a good cause. It is, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this is the third annual, I believe. Yes. So uh, it's again at Pappy's Place, Saturday, May nineteenth. Mark your and, calendars. Uh, mark your calendars. Because it's only a, a month and a week away. Now ticket sales. Let me tell you, uh, you can call six one four zero nine hundred. Or 336-5191. You can pick your tickets up at Summit Insurance, I believe, uh, also at... Summit's the, on Inman Street. Yes. Right. Yeah, on Inman Street, exactly. Right. Across right the street from, from where the tires. Teacher's Helpers used to be and all that. Larry's Car well, Wash. Well, it's the Goodwill now. It's the right. cafe, the Goodwill Cafe. That's it's right true. across the street from that. And uh, you can also, you can pick them up there. And also, I believe he said at um, Southern Heritage Bank, if I'm not mistaken, okay. also has tickets. And there'll be more ticket locations as, as the time goes on. But again, 614-0900-336-5191. There, I've done my buddy you proud. Have, that's right. You have. Great. Well, it's not just for your buddy. It's a great cause. I well, mean, we, John. We want that man. Yes. In fact, John Simmons spearheaded this many, many years ago. And he uh, passed before he was able to see this come to fruition. But it has and it this will. and it will and may not unless unless december 21st it's oh, all over yeah. I mean, well we no but we still got no that's happened in may this is may it's before that i know but it's the bill the the home's not to be completed until 2014. Yeah. if that's true <laughs> you know we're going to just all be hurled hurtled out in space because what's going to happen i think well the Earth's i mean rotation, you're going to go really quick anyway super, i mean after oh yeah this, i'm holding I'm on to something <laughs> you know, your maybe. mother um, but it, the, the Earth is supposed to spin the opposite direction. And when that happens, of course, gravity, instead of pulling you down, is going to throw you off. And we're just going to be hurled in space and just be up there, you know, floating around like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't it's think there'll be, be a whole lot of floating. I think there's a lot of disintegrating once you hit well, that ocean. Maybe. Depends upon how fast <laughs> we, we spin. Off, right? It's like a top. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully he's wrong. Nostradamus and the uh, the the, uh, the, Mayans. the Mayan the right. Mayan calendar. It, well, it, yeah, it just went. There was no more. But Nostradamus said this too. I don't know if he. I don't. I don't think he really predicted. He predicted date. the end of the world for. I think he started a few years gave, ago every year. Well, I don't think he gave a date like the Mayan. The Mayan the calendar just quit. So, but that's where that cartoon we saw that the guy came. He ran out of rock. Ran out of rock. He ran out of rock. It's so. like uh, it's gonna end here because there's no more rock to write. There's no more rocks. But in any case, calendar. we're not gonna worry about that now. No. We're gonna go to this. And then we're going <laughs> to go to that and then we're going to write and it's all going to be just fine. All right. 
So we've got Wednesday. We've got a great show in store for you today. Kim, who's our special well, guest? Well, I've always, Ron Moore is here to talk about um, some Bradley history. County history. He gave us a little hint about what he was talking about, but we didn't know what he, what even when he told us, we still don't know what he's going right. to talk about. So we're just on uh, pins and needles waiting. And we have Seema, I think am I pronouncing that right? Seema Swartzel from Arnold Elementary Memorial uh, Elementary School. She is the uh, music instructor out there and they have gotten a grant. She does a great job at writing some grants, I believe. And we're going to give you a little preview or a little show of what they had last Thursday at the school it's a garbage can band <laughs> drums <laughs> so it's going to be interesting we have show a video, video to of show. That. show a video yeah. and Seema will be here to tell us about um, the great things that are going on over at Arnold so, and uh, Julie Thornton was supposed to be yeah. here with a pet but you know she stood me up she went to go see her mom of all things down in Georgia so I guess imagine you know, that I know on Easter weekend I mean oh, going to be with that. family and everything so anyway we will excuse her and maybe we'll have her here next Monday with pet of the month but we do have semen we do have Ron so it's a right. great show. and then we're here so, yeah. so, so whether you know, or not that makes it well we you know, know it's probably not interesting but you know it won't be quiet could be informative though it, well and it could quite be, entertaining it, I'm not sure about entertaining uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens but we as the will hour get rolls the on. Hour. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be back with our show again. Seema uh, is Swartzel. Is that the name? Okay. And uh, in relation to Charles Swartzel? No. No. <laughs> no. Didn't I, happen. My son has been claiming that. Oh, okay. I see. I would. I would say yes. He's a cousin. He's a you know whatever. Uh, professional PGA golfer, right, by the way. And uh, just as you guys have just heard, you cannot show's not trustworthy at all. What? Why? <laughs> Because I would say he was. Yes, because he. I was. do say I'm related to Charles Swartz, <laughs> and I'm not, my last name is Palo. Palo. And, and I can tell you all, if Joe's ever told you anything, do not quote him. I have you so can. many times I quote him, and, though, and people go, "What? That's the stupidest thing I've." No, no, and I'm like, Joe, no. Gosh, no. What happens is Kim misquotes me, <laughs> or in the words of Roger, uh, 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 whoever can't see? remember. Don't even she listen. mishears me. I mishear him, right? I mishear him. That's so, it. So uh, anyway. Right. Um, Roger Clements. Couldn't even think of his name. I don't right. know why. But yeah, she mishears. Like <laughs> he miss, said, I, right. you misheard me. You misheard me. Um, but in any case, Tennessee Valley <laughs> this morning, Joe and Kim back with Seema and Ron. After this commercial break, please stay tuned. If you dare. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Discover great local programming right here on WTMB East Tennessee Television. Tune in weekday mornings at 6.30 a.m. for Tennessee Valley This Morning to find out what's going on in your local area. Watch East Tennessee Shopper with Joe and Kim Palo live every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Be caught up in all the latest sports action. Watch In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. with replays at midnight. All this and more on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, migraine headaches, even sprains and injuries. It is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level, providing an array of health benefits. So whether you're dealing with a weekend sports injury, chronic condition, or looking for anti-aging, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric services can do for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes five months and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. 
If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. Very simple process and it's well worth it. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley This Morning on WTMB. Again, we are glad you're with us on this Wednesday. We are now joined by Seema Switzel, and we thank you so much for being with us, Seema. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Well, Seema is welcome. the music teacher at Arnold Memorial Elementary School. School, and we're going to show you a video here in just a few minutes of uh, the garage band that was put together. <laughs> Tell yep. us a little bit about it's garbage. Garbage. It's garbage. Did I say garage? Right. Garbage. Mm -hmm. Actually, band. the garbage. name of the grant we called it Trash Can Land. Okay. Trash Can. And um, one of the things I'm very blessed um, to have been chosen as a recipient of a grant through the Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation, and this grant was singularly sponsored by Logan Thompson, wow. law firm here in town. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I got the idea last year when someone brought a trash can ban to our school and my kids just lit up like candles. Mm. And I thought, mm, that would be such a good thing for my kids to participate in. And my principal said, you know what we need to do for next year? She had the same idea, okay. Ms. Kelly Bender. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, there's confirmation. We're going to write a trash can ban grant. And of course, everything we do when we write a grant through Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation, is that we have to connect it to data-driven based information. How is this going to help a child in the area of reading, language arts, science, social studies, or math? And so what I did is I connected it to math because in order to read complex rhythms, um, students have to have a really strong understanding of fractions and how to subdivide a bead, right. just like you would subdivide when you do a fraction and how to add those up together to make sure that you've got an entire measure right. of like four or a wow, measure of makes, three. So they really had to kind of learn it backwards and forwards and then understand how to play that. Sure. And so I started working on it in January with um, math problems and math facts. Then we moved on into reading it on the board in rhythms. Then we worked on to reading it just on place cards. Then we started looking at the actual music and it was very difficult music. I had two people that assisted me with writing this trash can band. Um, one of them was a um, clinician. His name is Brian Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Brian is the band director at Ocoee Middle School and he's a personal friend of mine. He agreed to help. And also Colby Burris, who is at Walker Valley High School and wrote the arrangement for us. And so he, I, I appealed to him to write something that elementary could, could grasp. And he wrote some things. I said, I want it to be challenging, though. I don't want it to be too simple. And he wrote some really fun, challenging music for our kids. And I'm telling you, they just rose to the occasion. It was amazing to see how focused they were, how much they enjoyed it, how much they um, really got into it. Yeah. And exactly. it was just fun. It was just absolute joy for them. It sounds like it. Jennifer, do you want to run that for us? Let us see that video. And so we've got a two-minute little clip here of the production that they put on Thursday <coughs> at the school. Uh, Jennifer was out there with a the camera and captured um, a little bit of what was going on. So if she'll get that lined up, she'll play it for us and we'll see how all of
Wow, that look at terrific. you. And you just started now you just started writing the grant in January, right? Well, or we, the I, music. I wrote the grant in um, September. Okay. And then received news about mid October that we'd been awarded the grant. Okay. And we started working with kids in January. Mm, okay. No so I, th they came a really long that was some complicated stuff no there that I mean, you know, I could see me, I would have been hitting the person's drum next to me and maybe somebody They would have had no there. top on your drum. <laughs> That reminds me of that group Stomp. Yes, that and that, that kind of was that attitude. And, yeah. you know, we I was able to show the kids clips from YouTube of some other other um, trash can bands and show them some different things so they could kind of see what the end product was going to look like. And it really gave them something to shoot for, gave them vision right. yeah. uh, to exactly what they were going to go toward. And boy, did they ever come with. I mean, I was so, so proud of my students. Now, what age groups were that? That was the older that kids. Was that was fifth graders. Kids. But the beauty of a grant like this is that now I can start passing that down to the next group. The fourth graders oh, wow. okay. are now starting to work on it next year when those third graders come up to fourth graders. I'll start working with them as well because we'll just, the only thing we're going to need to reinvest in is another arrangement. Right. So right. it keeps, it's a grant that kind of keeps on giving. Yeah. And right. that's what I really like to do because it enthuses those other children to know that we're going to get to do that sure. too and it was just um musically it was wonderful it was it, it was a win-win situation they understood about math they were able to show that they were able to um be assessed by an audience like that and feel pride in their work sure. and so i'm really really excited about what this has done for my students sure. because we probably have the broadest um section of children of any school in the county sure. or city systems, um, we have, um, I, I know about 20 different countries represented in our school alone. Mm. Um, kids from Guatemala, kids from Honduras, kids from Brazil, kids from Mexico, um, children from China. Uh, we have uh, two little boys that are from Africa. Um, one is from Zimbabwe and the other one is the Republic of the Congo. We have a, just broad diversity in our students mm -hmm. and this is something that really helps our students connect. Yes. Sure you know, no matter um, what language they speak at home, no matter what, the th they all connect with that percussion. And mm -hmm. that's something that just really brings us together as a family. And I, I just love that. And to me, that's what music should be about. Mm -hmm. And it kind of crosses also um, uh, educational. We have some kids that are up there that are playing. They, they find it tremendously hard to do the academic work. But we're seeing them do this with ease. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it kind of kind of levels the playing field in that respect, too. So we just have seen what I would say basically say a lot of miracles for our kids mm, through this yeah. trash can band. Well, that is, and you're so enthusiastic. You can tell she loves her job. Yes, exactly. um, we were out there uh, last year with, with another grant that she did, mm -hmm. and that was that was amazing. You had um, the, the Delsimer. Uh, yeah, the, the Delsimer. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes, and they had made... Uh, for themselves, you guys had had done a class and had yes. made them personally for themselves, and then the guy that came and performed was an absolute. He was an, a winner. I mean, a national, a or international, international winner, winner Stephen right. Humphreys, and that gave our kids some real a real boost. And the beauty of that grant as well is we still have those dulcimers, and our students still play them. Right, Terrific. and so it gives them the opportunity. They pass those down to the next group of kids, and they can play those as well. It gives us twenty five string instruments to work with, and like. Music is such a beautiful thing because it does level the playing field. Um, there are, you know, a lot of kids are talented, but it allows them to shine in different areas. Mm -hmm. And it allows them, and hopefully that kind of confidence is going to kind of wash over into the academics because that's what we want. Right. We want to, to produce really strong academic students from our school. But music is just a piece of that puzzle. Sure it is. It's and, a piece and that, of that puzzle. That does give, because you do have a lot of, um, I, sometimes the, the more artistic a, a student is, I mean, we have an artistic son, so we had one that grew up with that, that it's not that they're not capable in the academics, it's just mm -hmm. that it's just not their cup of tea. They'd rather right. make music or they'd rather be creative, draw. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a very, very talented son, and, and um, but, you know, the academics, he was as bright as he could be. That wasn't it. But he really could shine in the areas that he was at. And that gave him some self-confidence in that because, you know, it was kind of hard for him to sit through a lecture. And, and I agree with that because, you know, we talk a lot about graduation rate. But I'm telling you, there are a lot of kids that stay in school because of the arts. Right. They stay in school because they want to be in band or they stay in school because they want to be in that drama production or they want to, um, to draw and have art. That's what 
connects them yeah. to school and keeps them there to graduate. That's what we want for our kids. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to know that there's something out there beyond even even out high school. We, we take our kids to Lee University every year so they can see that they can go on to college. We try mm -hmm. to implant that in them early because yeah. we really want our kids to be successful in life. That's the goal. Absolutely. And so this is learning cooperation. Um, they're learning all kinds of different things, teamwork, and those are life skills. Oh, yeah. And not just music. We're just gonna send you over there, Joe. Let well, you spend a little no, bit over say, there. We'll get you. We'll get you some teamwork. Kudos, kudos to you, though, and all the teachers that that see that vision and and, and then, of course, put it into uh, uh, practice uh, and getting the grant, the whole thing. Well, it's, I think that's wonderful. Well, I appreciate that, but we have great kids, and they deserve it. And what's more, we really, really thank the Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation and Logan Thompson because they caught the vision yeah. for what we were trying to do for our students and 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 helped us in turn helped us help that happen for sure. our students and so you know I know that the grant writing is is laborious it's about 20 hours worth of work but it's so worth it when you see the the end result mm -hmm. it's so worth it and that money is available to us through them and I'm thankful for that uh, because I know that we can make a difference for our children for our students and that's the most important thing to me well how many how many students do you have in the program when <laughs> we saw a lot up there well I that. have about 70 in wow. fifth grade and so that's a great thing I've got 60 coming up next week that are starting in fourth grade and so you know when you start thinking about how many kids will feed through the program mm -hmm. as they grow from kindergarten to fifth grade we have about 400 students <laughs> under that roof and so you know that's a difference yeah, for them is. and hopefully they're going to take what they're learning these fifth graders to the middle school and they're going to apply that as they get involved in things like band and chorus and the musical. They have a sixth grader in the, in the Cleveland Middle School program. Fantastic people over there that are willing to help shape their futures. And I think that's really important to see that we're that connection now, but we're feeding them through the process of being successful later on in life. Absolutely. And, you know, we see, like I said, we see graduation as the goal. Right. And that's part of what we do. You know, it's part. It's got to be part of what our thinking process. Uh, as educators, we have right. to think in that process, and and I really think that's what Cleveland City Schools speaks about when they say every child, every day, yeah, right. is giving every child every day the ability to be successful. This was a great way for me to buy into mm -hmm. that. Is to say, I'm going to write this grant, let my kids who may not be successful in other areas become extremely successful and feel the the pride in that. I. I when I show my children the video of their hard work, when they've done a program like that, that's where my reward comes sure, in, to sure. see their faces oh, yeah, light up. Oh, yeah, they'll be tickled to death. Oh. Especially, we'll, we'll put that, I'll have Jennifer to put the whole thing in entirety. If we can get it up, I think it'll go up on YouTube without a problem. Yeah. The whole thing, it takes a little while to get the, the bigger ones, but she can put that whole, and they can just watch themselves and tell everybody they're on YouTube. And it's a wonderful <laughs> video for them. Thank you. Well, yeah, and, and, and I think a, everybody that they know can, can take a look at it as well. And I think a great thing, it's kind of like, and, and I always attribute everything to athletics, but it's kind of like the athletic part of school it's the music part is like a melting pot you get kids from this part of town kids from this part of town mm -hmm. and they all come together in one accord uh, to make mm. everything to make music to make, to make music. beautiful music <laughs> well and it's a proven fact there's so many statistics out there that show that kids who are involved in the art do better all the way through and even uh, this is one of the facts that I'm always quoting but 66 percent of people who get into medical school are musically inclined Okay. and have music lessons and things like that because it develops parts of the brain. You have to use both sides of the brain to do something like this. Right. And it develops that creativity and thinking outside the box and those kind of things. But only 33% have our only science background. So that shows you that double the amount of kids that get into medical school have that musical background, no which really helps the brain to develop in a different way. And we start that in pre-K. Hmm. Start working with them in pre-K and kindergarten and starting to get them thinking in that direction. And, man, we see a difference. We see a difference. And so I'm, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about it because I know I'm making a difference for children's <coughs> lives. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, of course, like you said, and all the kids that are involved in it now will carry it on. Most of them. Is there a uh, percentage of kids that are in, in the arts early that keep keep it going all the way through? Or um, Yes, there is. There's a strong percentage. In fact, the, uh, the statistics show that kids who are involved earlier in the arts usually continue, particularly if it gives them that feeling of success and confidence, yeah. because that's what you're building in young, young children, is success, 
and confidence because after, you know, and, you know, trying something new is scary. It's scary for adults. Mm -hmm. But when you convince them that they can and just take them in baby steps and keep, you know, helping them kind of scaffold it so that they, they're finding success all along, along the way, boy, it makes such a difference. Such a difference. And, and I love that. I love to watch them from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade and, you know, watch them leave us and I keep up with them in middle school. That's just a real thing for me. I love the kids and I want to see them be successful. <coughs> I'm about to get choked. Oh. <laughs> it's just tickling my eyes are starting to water. Well, well so we, we thank you for being with thank us. Thank you for having me and I want to say thank you once again, Bradley Cleveland Public yes, Education Foundation, my principal, Kelly Bender, um, just those kind of people. You can't do it without that kind of support and I'm so grateful for that and grateful for the wonderful students at Arnold. They're just amazing kids and um, you know, I'm just thankful every day. Yeah. Well, you call us, you know, like you did this time. We, we were uh, privileged to, to be put in touch with you last year when you had the grant. So when you have something else, you call us and we'll be out there. Because it's really will. a great, Thank you. it's a great thing that they're doing out there at Arnold. And uh, and the passion is absolutely obvious. And, and you know, that's what, ha that the sad thing is, is when things get bad and, and cuts have to be made, that in education, it tends to be the arts that, that are the first things to get cut. That, you know, they'll keep athletics and, of course, academics. But the arts tend to get cut. So clearly. Cleveland has a great support system yes. for the arts here. Yes. Um, we have a great group of people in the, in the city and the county as well. And so we just thank you for keeping that going on and that you're passionate for it and that you understand the importance of it. And so we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Seema Schwartzel of Arnold Memorial, Memorial <laughs> Elementary School. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. All right, we're going to be back with more of Tennessee Valley this morning. We've got Ron Moore in the house. Talk about uh, some Bradley County history on the way right after this. Please stay tuned. Discover great local programming right here on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Tune in weekday mornings at 6.30 a.m. for Tennessee Valley This Morning to find out what's going on in your local area. Watch East Tennessee Shopper with Joe and Kim Palo live every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Be caught up in all the latest sports action. Watch In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. with replays at midnight. All this and more on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had a recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes, five months, and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. Very simple process and is well worth it. Hello, I'm Dr. Gupta and I'd like to introduce you to a valuable new healthcare solution here in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open and accepting patients. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions including autism, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even sports injuries and sprains. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises the patient's oxygen level in the body. This increased oxygen level in our tissues and organs boosts the body's natural healing abilities and allows our bodies to function at a higher level. We will be happy to work in cooperation with your regular physician. However, referral is not required for this treatment. So whether you're dealing with a weekend injury, a chronic medical condition, or looking for anti-aging solutions, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric oxygen treatment can do for you or your loved ones. I invite you to contact us today for some more information. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. 
Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. <laughs> Welcome back to Tennessee Valley. This one way out in front of you. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning uh, on WTMB. Joe and Kim Palo. It's Wednesday. Hope you're having yourself a good one so far. We are now joined by Ron Moore, our Bradley County historian who comes every Wednesday to speak to us about I some know. History. He is so faithful. You are he so is, faithful, Ron. Faithful. Thank you. And what are we going to talk about? Well, I don't know. Let's <laughs> make something up if we don't. <laughs> okay. What, what, you tell me. I told you what we were going to talk uh, about. Uh, Says something. Uh, Semesto. 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 Let's talk about Semesto. Semesto. Okay. Let's go back to World War II. Two. Okay. The big one. The big right. one. The, the big one. The big one. Yeah. WW2. You know, everything was rationed back then. You know, okay. tires, gas, eggs, food, you name it. And then we had drives to do uh, aluminum and metal and uh, rubber and all that. You know, I've, I've seen some things from uh, some grandfather's stuff and they had. He actually had little, the little ration things and he went and they said he could buy one tire. He had worn one out. And he could buy a whole set, he could buy one. one time. So you were regulated on what you could and couldn't have. So you can imagine that uh, anything that had anything to do with building was going towards the war effort. And we really made a sacrifice in this country. We were really were involved in that. Uh, and then something happened up the road. It was very, very important to the war, very, very important to uh, the ability for people to uh, eat. There's a lot of jobs created. It's called Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, uh, and I'm not going to talk about Oak Ridge, except okay. I'm leading you down to Cleveland. We're coming down. Okay. The, coming coming down, down. Oh, we lead you yeah. around, long yeah. circle here. Uh, in Oak Ridge, of course, uh, they started building, uh, they bought 59,000 acres. Uh, they basically took over 59,000 acres. You sold whether you wanted to or not, yeah. and there was, nobody could stop you. Um, it was built, there's two ridges, and then the river on one end. The ridges, they put the plants down in between the two ridges in case it blew up. It wouldn't kill everybody in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. ah. So the big mountain was there. So, but now, uh, there's only a thousand people lived on that 59,000 acre farmers. That's all it was. Wow. This was a very remote area. There was no trees there. I mean, no roads there. It was just trees, people, few people in the lawn. And that's why it was so good. It was such a isolated area that they could build the community there. So if you worked at Oak Ridge, you lived there. Well, there was a problem. Now they got, uh, got 75,000 new workers coming to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. People here in Alabama and Georgia and Braddock County and up through this area all went that way. They were making 50 cents a day or a dollar a day and they went to Oak Ridge and got a house and lived for three dollars a, wow. a day. Oh, wow. So you know they tripled their income and they were able to go up there. But we, we had to build houses and everything's rationed. So these people come up this pre-built, I gotta read this to you. It was, the houses, 2,500 of them at least, were built uh, made out, of, made something called Semesto. Semesto is a light but sturdy, waterproof and fire resistant building material. It was made out of sugar cane fibers mixed with asbestos and <laughs> cement. And they built, I mean, this was a sheet, sort of like a plywood. It was very, very sturdy, very light, and they basically went in there and built complete houses with this. And all the houses in Oak Ridge looked pretty much alike. Uh, they were uh, either a one bedroom, they were a two bedroom or a three bedroom, according to what size family you had. And they basically were in a little L. They had a little landing or a little porch like on there, one that made a little L. And everyone looked alike. The interior was just plain. Where they had plywood, it was plain or semesto. There was nothing fancy to it, but it was dry and it was clean. Uh, there's a few people lived in tents. Uh, that's a whole different story. But uh, so now. Uh, after we dropped the bomb and the war ended, uh, we didn't need 75,000 people in Oak Ridge, although they, we kept a lot of people, you know, uh, those company, uh, a lot of people, but now people made a lot of money, had opportunity, and now they had 15,000 homes up there they weren't going to need, so they started selling them. And so through, all through Tennessee and, and other areas, People bought houses, they put them on rail cars and brought them into the area here. And there was one gentleman here in Cleveland, bought 12 of them and built a whole little subdivision here in Bradley County. Seven of those houses are still standing today oh, here really? in Bradley County. Really? Made out of semesto. 
Asbestos. Is yeah. Asbestos is in there too. So now, uh, as best as I can tell, that's bad. <laughs> these houses were never designed to last 60, 70 years. So the houses are starting to deteriorate, and people have put some new siding on them. Uh, people still living in those homes? Yes, they're still living in the homes. Yes, well, what people. about the asbestos thing? Uh, well, that's tough. Up now, to the, I haven't been inside all these homes yet because uh, you know, there are people living there. Some of them may be just plywood or some other thing, but this mess up. They actually built government buildings out of these things, and there's some of them still standing. You know, it wow. was a great thing, but it does have asbestos in it. And cement, you know, and if all if they'd added a little lead in there, they'd add right. everything yeah, you they needed. Right, you could have, well, mercury could help it so, too. But there are 12 houses that were built off of Spring Place Road over here, a little community. It was near Big Spring School. Uh, one gentleman bought the house and brought them in here. The street's named after him. I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is. I don't is want everybody I don't want to run over there and run up and down. Because there's a very small street, dead ends back there. Uh, and like I say, uh, Deb and I went over there the other day. And uh, we counted seven of the houses still standing. Uh, once you figure out what they look like, if you right. what, look at pictures, you will see those. And uh, if you go to uh, uh, our uh, Old Town Cleveland Facebook, Old Town Cleveland, three mm -hmm. words, uh, I have a picture of the houses being built in Oak Ridge out of Semesto. So it'll give you an Semesto. idea what the house is. You know. Huh. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Semesto. <laughs> so, but the, the, uh, the homes were very, very cheap. They bought them cheap. They were built cheap, too. Um, I know a guy here in town who uh, actually lived in one up in the Knoxville area when he was going to school. You know, a lot of time flat lean to type mm -hmm. roofs on them. So uh, it's amazing that we still have those, that little right, bit of history standing yeah, here. Well, I mean, you know, yes, they were cheaply built and cheaply made and, and, and done. But, you know, 60 years later, there's still seven of them are still standing. There's got to be something I, said they for are, that. They are getting in disrepair, right. unfortunately, you know, thing. And, and most people... Uh, I'd say people who are living there have no idea that, the, that their homes were part of uh, uh, ending the war. Those huh. little homes there. Uh, people actually had to live there. And, of course, this was uh, half the employees were FBI agents <laughs> there seeing if anybody was talking. This is the most secretive. 75,000 people kept this a secret. And we have just a little bit of that history here. There may be more than those 12 homes here. There, wow. Uh, but... It came in here, so but like I say, there like I know there's seven still standing. Do you think any of those people know that their home is made of asbestos? Is well, they, like well say, a lot of homes. I mean, that's not. You know, yeah, but they got rid of that. If you, yeah. if you now they, well, these, these could be the pli just pure plywood homes. Like I say, they, most of them have put some type of siding on them now, uh, and because uh, these were just plain white siding houses, you know, right. there was nothing right. fancy about. We lived there. Well, we're talking about people who lived in poverty, though. It lived here sure. 50 cents a day and uh, still in the 40s. And people didn't have electricity and water. Now, all of a sudden, they had running water, electricity. Uh, they were getting paid. Uh, they, uh, were, they didn't know what they were there. They just knew it was something important. But no one really knew what they were doing because everybody had a separate job. Right, right. And like I say, they were spied on. But uh, I just thought it was interesting when Very I found these houses in Cleveland. The other day, I said, I just want to come tell people about it. And, and, and because of the secretiveness of Oak Ridge, you think that's a reason why maybe today it's a nuclear area there? I mean, uh, well, I they still do, do that type of work, yes. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, and we always talk about the Oak Ridge football team, but why they're all so much bigger than everybody <laughs> yeah. else. All that radiation <laughs> over all, there. It's all drinking well, the Kool-Aid. That's why the watermelons there. are this big. If, if the stadium lights go off, they continue to play. Exactly, because <laughs> they're all lit up still. <laughs> well, you know, it could be also that there's I'm tremendous, sorry, you guys. <laughs> there are tremendous jobs or tremendous people moving into that area. Uh, industry makes a lot of difference in your mm. school systems. Absolutely. And uh, so, uh, and our school systems, thanks to people like the lady here from Arnold, is what brings industry in here. Uh, that's very, very important. And those arts, she was absolutely correct. Yeah. Those kids that go through that do uh, do a lot better, and, and they stay in school. Well, it's I, the same thing in sports, too, you know, that uh, I think at one time, uh, Turner Jackson told me at Bradley High School, 27% of the kids at Bradley High School participate in some type of sporting event. Uh, they include cheerleaders and things of that nature. And so, uh, and those kids were never a problem. Those were not the problem mm -hmm. children. So, right. uh, and then you had the band in there, which is another, same thing, Walker Valley, mm -hmm. uh, huge band program up there. And those are not the problem kids in the school. Right. So, uh, great program, and that grant program was just unbelievable. I, Extracurricular I, I, yeah, activity really, at school. I mean, yes. yeah, Seema has, that's the second event that we've been out there to Arnold. She's very, very passionate right. about what she does. And, so, and I do have on old, uh, old Town Cleveland's Facebook, 
a picture of Arnold School being built. Put it on there today. 1920s. Man. 1920s Man. being built. Yeah. You want to take a commercial break and Let's come back with Let's do that. We'll come back with Ron. Do you want to do that? Well, I didn't know huh? if you were going to do that, and I knew if you were going to do that, that we, we needed to do it that. We're <laughs> easy. It's Wednesday morning. It's well, early. That's right. We've got, it's um, early. We can do anything we want to, Joe. Well, well we, we do, and we usually do anyway. Right, we do anyway. That's true. Um, but we're well, gonna, we do everything you want to do. Well, <laughs> it's uh, for obvious <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be back with Ron Moore, and we're going to talk more history uh, when we come back after this commercial break on Tennessee Valley This Morning. Thank you for being with us. I'm Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Hello, I'm Dr. Gupta, and I'd like to introduce you to a valuable new healthcare solution here in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open and accepting patients. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even sports injuries and sprains. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level in the body. This increased oxygen level in our tissues and organs boosts the body's natural healing abilities and allows our bodies to function at a higher level. We will be happy to work in cooperation with your regular physician. However, referral is not required for this treatment. So whether you're dealing with a weekend injury, a chronic medical condition, or looking for anti-aging solutions, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric oxygen treatment can do for you or your loved ones. I invite you to contact us today for some more information. Discover great local programming right here on WTMB East Tennessee Television. Tune in weekday mornings at 6.30 a.m. for Tennessee Valley This Morning to find out what's going on in your local area. Watch East Tennessee Shopper with Joe and Kim Palo live every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Be caught up in all the latest sports action. Watch In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. with replays at midnight. All this and more on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had a recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, it took about 25, 30 minutes five months and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. Very simple process and it's well worth it. <laughs> Um, welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning, the fun part of Tennessee Valley this morning. We have Ron Moore with us. We're talking about uh, Semesto. Semesto. Semesto, those of you that may not know what that is, we're going to recap here and, and talk a little bit more about it. But for those just tuning in, what is Semesto, Ron? It's sugar cane fibers. <laughs> cement and asbestos put together <laughs> that makes a light sturdy fire resistant <laughs> building material and a terrific sandwich uh yeah. no kidding yeah so, so okay. it was used during the war because of shortage i don't i don't think anyone uses it now but there was a company who created it and uh, uh if, if you type in c-e-m let me see if i can spell it right c-e-m i can't even find it on my notes now c-e-m-e-s-t-o Semesto. 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 So it's kind of like cement, but not really. It's and pretend it's, cement. It's supposed to be extremely light. And they built it, used it to build the homes in, in Oak Ridge because they needed that material. And this was something they could throw together. They didn't have a shortage of that at that time. And this was during the war. so right. And 12 of those homes ended up here in Bradley County. We know at least 12. They may have been 
hundreds, right, you know, right. but who knows? Know. So, so in the 12 homes that were brought here, so what happened is the gentleman that bought the homes, they literally just picked them up and moved them That's here. That's my understanding. Just That's like they would move any type home. Right. Wow, I wonder how many may have come apart during that. Oh, like, who knows? Like you I know? say, they're, they're very small houses. We're talking about, gosh, maybe 800 square feet or something okay. of that nature. Wow. I mean, you know, basically a very small living room combined with a kitchen area and then the bedroom, the bathroom, boom, you're done. And that's you're done. it. Yeah, I mean, done. It, nothing glamorous, no game rooms, you know, no room for flat screens or anything <laughs> like that. It, it was a, just a basic Not house. Not a whole lot of place to clean, though. Yeah. That's, that's the good part when, you have, when you're in charge of cleaning. Like so, but then once again, we had people that went from Bradley County and, and Meigs County. They caught buses and went up there. Some of them rode back and forth. They'd go up and spend a week there and come back. Uh, they, uh, uh, they lived in poverty, though. Well, you know, this was a very poverty uh, area, you know, in, in the Oak Ridge area. There was no Oak Ridge. You know, they created right. the, it's the newest city uh, in Tennessee, Oak, yeah. Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, and they probably somebody's created some little small community now. Going to <laughs> challenge me on that. Now, all these houses are out in the Big Spring School area. Now, Big Spring School, we don't have a Big Spring School. Right. Well, we did it one time from 1911 to about 1971, and it caught on fire. It, oh. got, it rebuilt in 1935, and then about 1971, it, it caught on fire. Uh, and they dissolved the school there, and they put the new jail on there over on Johnson Boulevard. Right. Johnson Boulevard and Wildwood Lake Road there, they put the new jail there. Uh, so uh, now they've got, that's the old new jail, and we've right. got a new the new, new jail. jail. So right. you to keep up. How many up. of those have you been in, Joe? Which one? All of them. <laughs> been in all of them, yeah. I uh, visit them quite it, often, it, it, Kim. I've got a lot to find. I can show you where his initials are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the... Uh, Big Spring School was an interesting school. Uh, Ann McClurry, uh, I hope I say her name right. I will get that wrong. But she was in Wild River. Mm. Okay. Uh, and she was there. And she mm. was sort of the music teacher, like the lady was here earlier. She was the music teacher. And really just, she had, she wrote plays. Uh, she, she came to work dressed like a movie star every day. Oh, she really? Was, uh, well, and, of course, all teachers back then actually right. dressed up very nicely through the 50s. And she'd come there in her big Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And then during play period, she'd sit in her Cadillac with her air conditioner on and watch the kids play. Ah. And Big, <laughs> That's my kind of teacher. There and, you go. <laughs> and Big Spring School probably had the most interesting playground of anybody. First off, there was no grass. Never any grass up no there. They never got around to putting grass at Blue Spring School. I mean, Big Spring. Not Blue Spring, Not but Blue, Big Springs. Big Springs. Uh, and basically, it was dirt. Clay? Uh, it's sort of a okay. sandy dirt mm -hmm. with rocks, and they would have rock wars, and you know, and sliding into home was a whole oh, old no. deal. Oh, yeah. So, and then if that wasn't bad enough, if if you were facing the school over on the left, there was a cliff. <laughs> you know, no, I, ca I call it a cliff. It was a a big and drop. John off. Cook, his first day of school there. The boys got together and rolled him down the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> He's still rolling, uh, folks. Yeah. Oh, it, it's a lot. And then, of course, you know, you know, you get in the park home run by getting it over the cliff, the ball run down, and someone had to run down the cliff. If you go over to the, where the old jail is now, it's the juvenile center. If you're driving, down, if you're on Wildwood Lake, you'll look and say, that's still the land, the lay of the land is still pretty much what it is. They've grown some grass out there. We could imagine this big drop off down here with it. Nice long slope. We're talking 40 feet, 50 no feet. Oh, wow. I mean, we're talking about a big one, and it would be a good roll. Did any kids get hurt there? Oh, yeah. yes, everyone. Oh, I'm them. sure. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, they had teachers who, if you got hurt, they hurt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just... Really, yeah. you well, know, you no, got punished yeah, for you punished getting for hurt. hurt. Right. right, absolutely. Shouldn't be over by the, the cliff. That's right. I but got in trouble many times for getting and, hurt. And um, I didn't bring it, but in one of those plays that put on... There's a young man there dressed in Uncle Sam outfit. And, of course, you know, music and talent brings you Is on that into... that Steve <laughs> No, 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 no. He's still got his. I know. I, I've I seen know. that one. I know. But Back this, in the this, day. Now there's a county commissioner who... Then I'm having this blown up, taken to the county commission meeting. I will not, I will not mention his name, <laughs> but his initials are Ed Elkins. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, yes, and I just, I was sitting there Poor looking Ed. at the picture and said, oh, that's me over there on the left. And I says, oh, yes, we've, we've got to share this with more people. 
And, uh, but, uh, but <laughs> I the, wish you'd have brought it here. We could yeah. have put it on and shown everyone. Uh, but the uh, principal's uh, last one uh, that I remember was Mr. Gass. Mm -hmm. Jim Barger, who was a county commissioner, was a, a principal over there. So uh, uh, a lot of kids that uh, through there, uh, the Doc Germans, uh, who's uh, a legend here around Cleveland. If yeah. you know Doc German, he'll <laughs> tell you he is. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Doc's a great guy. I mean, if you hadn't had Doc on here and need an hour to fill, You've got somebody. Yeah, yeah, Cleveland anything. Speedway guy. Yeah, Cleveland Speedway, and the Caney Creek guy. Mm -hmm. uh, great interview. Well, his uh, his cousins, his brother's uh, kids, his his dad's brother's kids. I'll get that right. Mm -hmm. They were went to school there, and uh, one of them wrote a book about Big Springs. Uh, it says, "Don't call me Verily." And uh, and the other one wrote mm -hmm. a uh, the other sister wrote some kind of fiction novel. So. The German family, uh, but they come out there. It just shows you that these little schools and these teachers make a huge difference over there. Yeah, they do. And uh, like I say, it, it was the old day. There was no air conditioning. Uh, this wow. Had an old time. boiler in there. You went and had to put coal in it in the morning. Uh, of course, the greatest f uh, thrill for any kid going to school was get to do the racers. Oh, I know. Oh, go outside oh, go and out dust the racers. Or on oh. the trees. Yes, on the trees. Go hit yes. them on the trees or come in. I yes. love to do that. That was one of the greater jobs um. at Big Spring School. You had to be really good. And I mm -hmm. understand Ed Elkins was the teacher's pet. Ah. Uh, oh, he got to see yes. the racers a lot, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's why he's commissioner. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, it happens like that. That's right. <laughs> see, so, some of the people turned out good over there and some turned out to be politicians. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, That's right. Absolutely. Ed, Ed is my county commissioner down in the first district, so uh, uh, and a good friend of mine. So and I, good I, I can. So you can that's right. Yes. You can give him a hard time. Yes, I can, and, uh, and I, you I'm, do. I'm proud that he stands up for our financial needs in Bradley County. He argues a lot with them, but uh, sometimes it's better than just voting yes and, go and let things yeah, <laughs> move on. So, but, but that that is quite interesting, and I guess uh, as time went on, uh, and those homes weren't needed, some folks may have, with the property they had those homes on, may have torn them down and rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But they, as you said, there's still seven of them still standing. Right. I'd say there's one gentleman who built all these, and uh, apparently he was an entrepreneur, <laughs> and uh, had a little property over there, and, and actually they named a little street after him, and it's two little streets there that connect together. One's a dead end, one goes. Uh, just past the church over there in Dead Ends, uh, over there near uh, Washington Avenue Baptist Church. Like I say, uh, you, you, if you drive through there, you'd probably miss them, unless you really know what you're looking for. You know, uh, go do a little reading about uh, Oak Ridge and look at the houses, and once you see one of them, if you ever went to Oak Ridge, they have a model of one of those houses at their museum there, mm. and you can go out and actually walk through it, and you'll see basically it's just a cardboard shell, nothing fancy whatsoever. I'll say once again, though, if you'd lived in a log cabin and you didn't have look, electricity or water, right. uh, people lived in dirt floors, uh, you know, this is the 40s. Uh, you have to realize that, that Tennessee, uh, 40s, 50s, even the 60s, even here in Bradley County, we had dirt roads in the 60s. We had people still living using uh, uh, outhouses and having dirt floors in our homes and didn't have electricity. Uh, so... I would not have done well without air conditioning or heat or yeah. indoor plumbing. Now, I, I just hey, don't, we had indoor on. plumbing, but I grew up in Florida. And their we cell phones were only two G. I know. Two G. Can you imagine they that? Were, or zero G, I should right. say. But yeah. that's right. Joe did. He grew up in Florida, and they had no air conditioning. And when I started dating him, and then after we got married, and I got pregnant. We, I had Corey when I, we lived in Florida, and they did not, she wanted me to come over. I mean, in August, I was pregnant, a big pregnant, and have like hot roast beef and mashed potatoes, and it's 100 we used degrees. To, we used and, to take oh, four no. or five cold showers So when you started today. date Joe, you broke out into a sweat, what you're saying. Absolutely. That's exactly right. That's what Absolutely, I, I and it was because there was no that. air conditioning at that house. I was like, Joe, how, really, seriously, let's just go to my house. Can you right. imagine going to school? I, you know, I went to school. With no air conditioning, mm -hmm. and we had the old steam radi radiators, which basically the the boiler heated water through the pipes, and they went through those radiators, which would get very very hot. Mm -hmm. right. And every once in a while they'd leak, and steam come out, and they're all the time going bang 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 mm -hmm. bang bang. You may hear that all day, and, and so, um, and that that was big spring. And school. they had those big fans, remember those huge fans? They no, were. I don't remember. You don't have fans. big. We they had big fans. fans they had on and. Of course, they'd open the windows to the school, but the fans, and it would just be We had those little windows air. that 
that opened up yeah, like this, yeah, which yeah. really didn't let air in. No, right. I went to North Lee Elementary School, and we had air the the units. You know, by the time I guess I was oh, that I remember. Go ahead and point out that you're younger than me. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I, I, we had the little wall units of the air conditioning in there, and I remember. Well, I'm, I, we never had that stuff, and I've got to mention Avery Rose Coleman. Okay, Avery Rose Coleman. Yep, she was born. On Good Friday, okay, and that's my oh, new that's my grandbaby. new grandbaby. I had to miss yes. that. We, exactly. That's right. Ryan's a grandpa. That's exactly right. He is. My, my cane's over here. He is, oh, oh, I, I know. But congratulations he's officially on air. We say that, yes. and uh, I know you're proud. That's very, very right. Proud. I know a little girl. Oh my goodness. And now she'll be she'll be all right. She'll be granddaddy's little oh, girl. girl. I mean, rotten. Yeah. We've already got her yeah. headset so and some uh, microphone. There you go. Get her we're into sitting the, up there. Yeah. That's right. Have well, you know, they have that saying where folks say, if I knew grandkids were going to be this much fun, I'd have had them first. <laughs> yes, right. well, definitely, so, yes. you know, but uh, It's hard to imagine, though, that your daughter now is a mother. Right, mm -hmm. I know. It's sort of a shock to you a little bit. I you can know imagine. Saying? And oh to goodness. trust your daughter with a baby. Oh, no, I, I know anytime my kids, I would never think about if they were, I'd be like, Lord, if well, Corey now, was to have a child, I It's would. Will that I'm more worried about than I am. <laughs> Maybe you guys. I've got boys. Got I, didn't boys have any, so, well, yeah, I didn't have yeah. any girls, so but, I don't know uh, that you'd probably you know, uh, feel better. Ash, Ashley, a great mother, and believe it or not, Will is... Uh, it's, he is thrilled as, uh, as well. Ashley. You know, he's been on he's been on duty there for yep. a while. He was sure. on a uh, uh, mama duty waiting for the big yep. due well, day. Unfortunately, so. the dad had to go to Atlanta. Do he works for Whirlpool? Was doing training down there. Uh, he's a, he is the trainer, so he went down to do training. And now I think he's going to, have to go out to some other Michigan or something. Uh, oh well. So, so Will will go over and spend there, and <laughs> he will. And eat their food and be a good practice <laughs> for him for <laughs> down the road. And he'll be well. He'll be yeah. uncle. So uncle how, Will. how big? How big was she? How size? She was eight pounds and wow. eight ounces. Oh wow, good for And her. Uh, uh, had to have a C-section. The baby was turned the wrong way. Everything was fine, but the doctor said, "Let's just go ahead and take it. Right, exactly. And avoid that." So uh, they they came home today. They Terrific. came home that today. How fun! I know. I guess I know where you're going this evening. I don't know if I can get in their park in their I, house. The house, I know. The, the, we That's have uh, the, all the all the other grandparents. My wife is there, and Will is there, and then of course Dustin's family is there. And so I would have to park like in town and walk. <laughs> oh, right, or just let's say park here, here and walk, walk, leave and walk in. That's right. I'm walking. All here. right. Well, again, congratulations. Um, it went thank on. You. And uh, we do want to thank Ron for being on the show uh, this morning. And don't forget Ron and Debbie Moore. Old Town Cleveland, every Saturday from 10 to noon on Whoop Radio 99.9. And really and, uh, check out their Facebook page. You really right. guys have a lot of great information. Hundreds yes. of old pictures. Yes. Then, and sometimes we need your help telling us what. Also, we're actually going to start at 8 o'clock. Oh, are you really? Okay. Wow, 8 o'clock this great. week from 8 to 9.30. Okay. We're going to be talking to the Kiwanis Club. They've got their pancake day. Ah, right there outside the Whoop Studio. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so we'll probably talk to politicians. Okay. <laughs> a lot of and them. anybody that walks in the studio, we're just going to interview them, have fun. And then Make at 10 o'clock, we're not going to talk today on Saturday. We've got a bluegrass band called Mountain Cove coming out of Signal Mountain. The oldest guy in there is 20, the youngest is 16. Wow. They play some of the best bluegrass music I've heard in a long time. They're going to get there early and just sit up out there by the pancake people and pick and sing to them. Okay, oh, so that, that's Saturday. That's yeah. Saturday, at, at down at the Village Green. I will break So down. this Saturday is all fun and music, and let's say we'll take a 30-minute break from 8 to 9.30 with the Quanta stuff, and then from 10 to 12, we're going to have live bluegrass music. We'll talk about the history of bluegrass and things that okay. Well, thank you for being with us. You're we welcome. want to thank uh, Seamus Wurzel for being with us this morning. Thank you for joining us here on Tennessee Valley this morning. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have yourself a good week.